What's going on you guys and welcome back to the channel. In the last video, we created our CRUD endpoints that allows an authenticated user to create, read, update and delete uh, a object using our API. And we're using the example of a status or a status update, much like with Facebook or writing tweets so they can post it, they can retrieve their list of tweets or status updates they can get back individual ones, delete them, and also update them. Now, in this video, we're gonna wrap up this series by writing some tests, as this is something that has been asked by a couple of users, and I think it's also very important to just have a glimpse of how one can go about writing Django tests. Now, we're not gonna write tests for everything. The sole purpose of this video is to write tests so we can uh, test for our APIs, uh, rather than our services that we've built However, indirectly, they will be covering them, but we won't test like delete user status, but rather the APIs themselves. So getting them, deleting uh, and posting, etc. The same goes with our user endpoints. So to begin with, the first thing is to make two necessary installations. Now I'm currently in the same directory as the manage.py file. I'm just gonna go a layer above so this one where I see the my readme, but also the directory of our, of the project and the vven file. Now, I'm going to be using PyTest for this. Django has its own kind of recommendation or kind of ships with Django, which is this test case. I'm not a huge fan of that as writing tests using what the Django tests library isn't so Pythonic, and that's just a strong opinion held by me, but also held by a few people. Um, so I'm gonna use PyTest as, yeah, it just makes more sense writing it, and it feels better when it comes to writing tests using PyTest. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and install what we need to install. So the first one is PyTest itself. So to do that, it's pip install, and then PyTest, and then PyTest, Django, and that's just the extension to test Django using PyTest. So hit enter. Okay, let's clear that. So to begin with, the first thing is, I'm just gonna do some little bit of housekeeping and just delete these tests that we have inside our status app and our user app. So just right click, delete, okay. And the same for user and where is delete, delete. Okay, cool. Now, the first thing that um, we need to do is create a PyTest uh, INI file. And for that, we need to do it inside our project um, directory itself. So this API directory, I'm gonna right click new and then file. I'm gonna call this PyTest I can spell it dot I N I like so. So it should look like that with the extension of I N I. Now inside that, what we need to write is the following. So in square brackets, PyTest. Underneath that, we need to add in our Django settings um, to it. So Django underscore settings underscore module. And this will be the path to it, so core.settings. After that, we need to add in the Python files, so the kind of files that you want PyTest to actually test. So we want um, any file that has tests.py, test underscore, and then asterisk, so basically any file that goes with the example test, um, user endpoints, stuff like that, and just put a .py. And you can also put this in as well, tests.py. Now we'll only be focusing on this one, but just to give you an idea of other files that you can add in, you can do tests, you can do asterisk underscore tests, you can name it however you want, but the kind of custom is to have it so that the word test is in there somewhere, but we'll be writing our test files in the format of test underscore and then whatever name you add. Okay, so let's just close this. Now, to actually see if PyTest is installed properly, um, I'm just going to 
jump into the API directory, so our project directory, so clear this, and then run PyTest, and you should just get the following. So there's nothing added, but you know it's picking stuff up. There's some warnings around config or whatever, but this is fine for now, it's uh, working fine. Okay, so the next thing is to add a directory and I'm gonna call this directory, it's going to be a Python package. So create a directory and this will be called tests. Inside that, in order for it to be a directory, you need to add the init file. So underscore, underscore init, underscore, underscore. So now we have the init file inside tests, which makes it a direct a package. Inside that, I'm going to add another directory, and this is just more for keeping everything organized, knowing where to look. As uh, yeah, if you're building a rather complex API or writing something for production, you'd probably you you could at least um, go along these lines. So inside that, I'm going to create a new Python package. And with PyCharm, you can do that just by right-clicking Python package. Otherwise, you can create an empty directory and just put an init file inside it. I'm gonna call this API. This comes with this, and make sure you have the init file inside that as well. This one just auto-created it for me. And then inside API, the last thing is, um, or well, not the last thing, but the next file is going to be a file that will test our user endpoints. So I'm gonna call this test underscore user. Okay, so based on our like organization, we know that everything inside of tests API will be anything relating to API tests. Okay, so that's enough of me talking. Let's actually write some code. Now, the first one I want to test is our endpoint for registering a user. Now, if you remember from a couple of videos ago, we had this API here, so register API, which has the URL register. And just before that, it's prefixed with API. So if you go inside core, we have URLs and then API here. So API forward slash register. And that is the endpoint I want to test as the first one. So I'm going to import PyTest. Then I'm going to say PyTest. If I can spell again, mark dot Django underscore DB. Now this is a decorator, as you can tell with the uh, ampers, uh, the at symbol here. And what this is saying is that this test will be making use of the Python, uh, of the Django, of the Django database. So next I'm gonna say test register user, and then put pass here for now. So this is actually a valid test. It tests nothing, of course but it will, it will pass. So I'm just gonna go back down into the command line, clear everything and run PyTest again. And you should see here, this line that I'm just, I've just um, highlighted that we have this little green dot and this green dot basically symbolizes a test, which is this test here. And it's got 100% pass rate, which is true because it's at the end of the day, it's doing nothing, but let's actually allow it to do something. Now, in order to actually get the, um, to actually make a kind of uh, HTTP request, we need a client for that. Now, in order to get this client, we need to import it from REST framework. So we can say from REST framework dot test import API client. Okay, next, I'm just gonna remove some of these lines. Next, I'm gonna create a object and call this API client. And this will allow us to make post requests, get requests, you name it. Now inside, back inside, um, now inside our um, test function, let's go ahead and first create our payload. So in this test, we're expecting the user to register successfully. So we'll create a payload. This is going to be a dictionary. What we need is the first name, which we'll set to, let's say, Harry, and then last name, Potter. Oops. Oh, last. I don't know where my head is today. And then Potter. 
email harry at hogwarts.com and password let's just say time for some testing okay so that's our payload so this is what we'll send when registering now we'll say response equals client dot post and we want to target api forward slash api forward slash register forward slash and then here put payload so all this is doing is posting this data, this dictionary to our register endpoint. And then we get back our response and we store it in this variable. Now, in order to get the data outside of response, we can say data equals response dot data. Because remember, when we post something, when we post to a register, when we register a user, we get back the user with the ID, the first name, last name, and email, we don't get back their password. So we can say something like assert data, square brackets, first name equals, and we can associate with this first name here. So inside our payload, we'll say payload, first name, and let's actually run this. So back in the command line, I'm going to type in pytest, hit enter, and we get back 100% test coverage. Cool, so, so we know like that's working, we're getting back the right response. We can add some extra checks, so we can say data, and then last name, payload, last name, and we also wanna make sure that password is not in there, so we can say assert password, in the not in data. Let's run that. Let's clear all of this again. And also, if you're using PyCharm, you should or may see this like green play button here. That's to run a test. PyCharm does that for you, which is quite nice. I think I well, I I'm pretty sure that there are some VS Code extensions that you can use to kind of do this as well but PyCharm just comes with this by default, which you can click play and you get this whole like output. You see that test passed, but in order to keep it a bit more general, like I'm just going to use PyTest in the command line and we have 100% coverage. So we know password is not in the data. That's what we expect. Then finally, we can just say assert data, square brackets, email, um, equals the payload and then email. You can of course write the test as long as it's testing the right thing. So we're testing to make sure the user registers correctly. So make sure you do as much as you can to kind of cover what you can. Your style might be a bit different, but with PyTest, we just have this simple assert equals um, or assert not in sort of structure, which is way more Pythonic than what comes with the test case that, or the Django test, the default Django test library. Okay, so let's just run this one more time, PyTest, and we get 100% coverage. Okay, that's nice. Let's go ahead and test some more endpoints. So let's go ahead and try out test user login. So we need this decorator again, as we will be writing to our database. Then we'll say, test login user and then after that what we want to do is first log the user in so let's go ahead and take this and then we can say that the next step is response equals client dot post and this will be targeting the login endpoint and the payload is going to be and instead of writing it in the variable I'm just going to put it in so we need an email and we'll say harry at hogwarts dot com the password which is time for actually I'm just going to copy it in case it fails 
time for some testing. So what I did here is just, I'm just logging the user in again, or I'm registering the user and then logging that user in. And finally, we can just say assert and then a response. And it comes with a status code. The status code for login is 200. So we want it to be success, a success. And then finally, let's just clear all this and run PyTest again. And we have two passes. Okay, so that's nice while well, our user is logging in. Uh, we can also write another test to ensure that it fails if we give it the wrong credentials. So let's go ahead and take this. And then we'll say test login user fail. And one thing to note is that you have to put the test at the beginning of your function name. Otherwise, PyTest won't pick this up as a, as a valid test. As it will just be treated as a normal Python function. So make sure you always have tests at the beginning. And then we will just say that um, we'll give it, we'll say response equals client dot post. We'll take this in again. Oops. Like that. And the reason why I can actually use these values again, so harry at hogwarts.com and time for some testing, is that when it comes to this test, like the entire database is clean again. So it, this test is unaware of whatever we did in this test here, which is quite nice. I mean, then you don't have to think about these things. However, just to make things clear, I'm gonna put Bob and whatever here. And then this will say response dot status code equals 403. And I think that's for unauthorized. Um, and then let, let's go ahead and run it. So back in the command line, run pytest, and we get three fails. So if we give it the invalid credentials, we, we get a 403. Now, one thing you may have realized is that this whole thing of registering a user again and then logging them in and then trying it is a bit tedious uh, and can be quite annoying, a bit cumbersome later on if you're testing the credit endpoints or whatever. You don't wanna have to keep registering or logging, registering the user, logging them in and then running it. And this is where PyTest also becomes very useful in that you can create a file called a conf test and basically create objects that you can use or fixtures as PyTest calls it to use in other um, tests. Now, what I'm saying obviously doesn't, may not make a lot of sense, but we, I can show you instead and maybe that makes things a bit clearer. Okay, so before we continue with any more tests, let's go ahead and inside our test directory, let's create a new file and we'll call this, and it has to be named like this, conf test, like so, .py, so this thing here. And inside that, this is where we can add objects that we can use later on, or fixtures. And I'll show you. So we can say import PyTest. And then from the, actually we'll leave that for now. We can actually add that later on. But let's do PyTest. So ampersand, or at sign PyTest, and then fixture. So we need this decorator. Then say user, call it whatever you want. This is just going to be the user fixture. And then for this, what I'm gonna do is from the user, I want to import the services and I'm gonna call this as user services. Now I'm first gonna create a user data class like this. This will all make sense in a second and then user data class. And then I'm gonna pass in like the first name, which is Harry, last name, which is Potter email harry at hogwarts.com and the password which is i'll put i love magic i can't remember what i put for the in the other test but this is our use data class and then let's create a user we'll say user equals user services dot um, create user and then we'll just pass in our user data class as user data class. Cool, and then finally, 
what we can do is just return that user. And remember, this is actually returning a data class version of our user, but that's fine uh, for our tests. You can, of course, use the model. So you can just import the model and return the, the object itself. But this is just the user data class version. And now, now that we have this fixture, what we can do is go back into our test user file. Now inside there, what we can add is inside, let's say login user. So instead of doing this whole thing, we can have this user that we've already created like that. And then as a result, we can just remove all of this. So we've already created a user, it exists in our model, and we can actually go ahead and run it. So we can say, just clear all this, PyTest, and we get an error. Um, we get a 403, and that's because, why do we get a 403? Ah, because we have an incorrect password. So we need that password, this I love magic for this. Let's just clear this, run it again. And we get three passes. So instead of like registering the user again, which we really don't need to for testing our login, we create a user fixture, which is a yeah, we did by default, this user is added to our database. And then we log that user in. And this is exactly what we've done here. We don't need it for this one, because we're actually just testing registration. We don't care about the user at this, uh, like, before a registering, we care about it after. In this case, it doesn't really matter because we're just testing for fail, so we don't need the user there. But let's use it elsewhere. Um, so actually, before we do that, let's go back into comp test. And if you remember, we created this client uh, equals API client. Um, instead, what we can do is just create a client um, as a fixture. So we'll say pytest fixture and we'll say this is called client and all that will return is just the client itself so we'll say return api client which we need to import first so we'll say from rest framework import or from rest framework dot test import api client and then down here we'll just say client now what we can do is back in our test user, we can remove this. We can pass in client here. And we this then just replaces it here. Um, inside this, we can add client. And then here we can also add client. Okay, so we can just run it again, just to make sure that, oops, I opened up something. Uh, we can just make sure it's working. So we can say pytest and everything's working fine. Okay, let's go ahead and test our endpoint that retrieves a user. So we'll say, again, we need to use this decorator here. We'll say test underscore get underscore me, and we need the user, and we need the client. Okay, so first of all, what we need to do is log the user in. So client.post, and then we'll say uh, API forward slash API, and then login, and then payload. Oh, we don't have to say payload, we'll just say dictionary. And then let's paste in this here. So Harriet Hogwarts with the password, I love magic. Let's paste that inside it. And you you may actually be thinking like, okay, why are we logging the user in? Like, can we just turn this into a fixture? And we most certainly can, and we'll do that in a second. But just before we do, let's go ahead and just finish this test. So we log the user in, then we'll say response equals client dot get, and we'll say API forward slash me. So this other endpoint that we wrote just to get back the user and and first check to see that its response is status code is 200. Let's just run this. And it works. So we're logging in correctly with our user fixture and then getting this endpoint. 
Then let's just say data equals response dot data. And we'll say assert data ID equals user dot ID assert data. And let's just add in the email equals user dot email. Let's run it again. And everything's working fine. Okay, so just before we continue, let's just turn this thing here into a fixture as well. So we already have a client and this is more of just a bland client. There's nothing authenticated about it. So let's go ahead and say pytest dot fixture. And then we'll call this auth client. So authenticated client for short. This here needs our two fixtures. So in order to use those two fixtures inside another fixture, let me just shrink that. So in order to use this client fixture and user fixture, all we need to do is pass it in as an argument, just like our tests. And then we'll say client.post and then forward slash API forward slash login forward slash and then put in our payload email. And the email here is just user.email and then the password we need to enter that manually is I love magic. And then we can just return client like so. So this is just returning back a client that is authenticated. Um, yeah, so instead of having to log the user in each time. So I'm back inside the test underscore user. Instead of client here, I'm going to say auth client. I'm going to remove this, I'm going to remove this. Oops, not that. And here I'm just gonna say auth client like so. And then I'm just going to clear this and then run it one more time. Oops. And we have four passes. Okay, so that's pretty much it for like, um, well, we just have the logout. I mean, we can add that in anyway. It's a quick one. So let's just do that. So we'll say pytest. Oops. pytest.mark.django underscore db. And what we need here is just an authenticated um, endpoint or authenticated client. So we'll say test logout. We'll say auth client, and we'll say response equals auth client dot post as our logout is a post request. We'll say API forward slash logout forward slash. There's no uh, body for this post and then we'll say assert um, and then response dot status code is 200 assert response dot data and remember we have like a little message so say message equals and our message is so long farewell now let's run this so hopefully we should have five passing pi PyTest and there we go, 100%. Okay, so that's our user endpoints. I mean, you could probably test this logout a bit more rigorously, checking to see that like, you know, the user can't access, I don't know, this get me endpoint, which I mean, we could add, but uh, for the sake of time, um, this is our endpoint. Actually, let me just get rid of this line. Our tests for our user API. Okay, so to kind of, for the sake of completeness, let's go ahead and write tests for our status endpoints. So inside API, new Python file, I'm gonna call this test and status, and this test.statusPY. Now for this, let's go ahead and import pytest. We say at pytest.mark.django underscore db. The first thing is to create or test, sorry, test, create status. We we'll use the auth client again, because we need to be authenticated in order to create a status and the user. So we'll say payload equals dictionary, we'll say content as that is the key. And then the value for that, let's just add something. This is a really cool, test i love tests log so nice little message and then we'll say response equals and then auth client dot post 
as this is a post request and then API status, that's our endpoint. And then we'll chuck in our payload. Okay, so what do we expect from this? Well, first let's get our data, say response.data. And we also want to see, make sure that a status actually exists inside our model. Now to do that, let's just import from status, import models. And then down below, we'll say status from DB. So what we're basically saying is that, okay, we're posting our payload to this endpoint. As a result, this, this new status should exist inside our database to get that from our database, we'll say models.status.objects.all as there should only be one anyway, so we can just do it like that. You can filter it based on the user ID if you want, but I mean, given that in this test case, there should be no other status up until like um, this point, and there should only be one afterwards, so we can say that. Um, otherwise, you can just say filter, and then user ID equals user dot ID and then dot first. But I'm just gonna leave it at this, it's a bit cleaner. Okay, so here we'll say assert and then data content. So the date, the response that we get back from this, because remember once we post a new status update, we will also get back that status update. And here we can say status from DB dot content. Let's go ahead and run this. Now with PyTest, if I type in PyTest, it will test everything that has test, that is the name test underscore test underscore. Um, however, if you want to single some things out, you can say PyTest and then tests and then API. And then we want this file test status. And that will just test that file there. Hit enter. And you can see we get one. If you want to test them all, you can just do PyTest like that. And now we have this test user.py and also test status. And this one here is working. So we can just check the last thing or the next thing is data. We wanna make sure that the ID matches up the ID that we get back from the database ID. And then we wanna make sure that the same user that we use to create this is also used. So say data user as it's a nested JSON dot ID equals user dot ID. And that would be enough to ensure that. So, and this is this user that we've passed in as our fixture. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. Just gonna clear all this. I'm going to do PyTest and I'm just gonna test the individual file. Okay, so that's working fine. So that's creating our status. Let's cover the other endpoints. So we'll do test, pytest, dot mark, dot Django, underscore db. And this will test the user status, get user status. So this will get back all the statuses that we've put up, so client and then user. And we'll say, well, let's just create a couple of them. I mean, we can create fixtures. You can definitely go ahead and do that if you want. But for now, I'm just going to write them in here. So model status and then objects dot create. And I'm going to say user underscore ID equals user dot ID. And remember, we can't just do user equals user because the user in our fixture is actually a data class. This doesn't accept a data class here. It accepts only the Django object of our user. So I'm gonna put user underscore ID, and then dot ID. We'll say the content is another test status. And then let's create another one because this will return a list of our status. And then instead of content for content here, we'll put um, I love Python. Python is magical. Stay in line with the Harry Potter theme. Um, and then we'll say response equals auth client dot get and then forward slash API forward slash status. 
And then let's just do a quick test and say that assert the response status code should be a 200. And then the length of it should be two because we've created two status objects. So say assert len and then response dot data equals two. Let's run this test. So I'm going to run the file itself and do, oops, pi tests. Actually, let's just run it all. And we got a fail because we get a 301. What is the reason for that? So this 301, so this response status is coming back as this. So the reason for that is because our API, forward slash API, forward slash status, it needs a forward slash at the end. It seems to be very picky about that, but it makes sense. We want it to be as exact as possible. So pi test, and there we go. We get our pass there, no fails, nice. Next, we can of course test like the detail um, 404. Um, we can get test the detail like view of it. Um, and you can definitely go ahead and do that. But what I wanna make sure is pytest.mark.django.db. So if, a, if we go to an endpoint where the status doesn't exist, so we'll say debt, Define a function, test function, get user detail, um, user status detail, I think that's a better name, 404. We will say auth client. And here we'll just say response equals auth client dot get. And we'll pass in an invalid endpoint, so status, and then zero, because there will never be a case where we create an object that um, has an ID of zero as Django only allows for one or above. Then here we'll say assert that response dot status code equals 404. Let's run that. Let's clear all this. Pi tests. Let's run the individual file and we get three passes. So if we try to access this endpoint here zero, we should and we must expect a 404. Okay, now you can of course just do the detail view itself, so we retrieve it, but I think given what we've already done, uh, hopefully that should be a bit straightforward, but I'm more interested in the update and delete. So let's go ahead and write those. So pytest.mark.django.db test, and then we'll do update user status and we need the auth client and we need the user. So first let's create our status and we'll say status equals models dot status dot. I'm just gonna copy this one here. And then let's create our payload for our put request equals dict and then content I just updated my status. Whoop. Okay, so, um, okay, let's make our request. So we'll say response equals client, auth client dot put. And I think it would be best to name this instead of update, let's call this put test put user status and we need our endpoint API status, and we also need the um, ID of the status that we want to update. So to do that, I'm just gonna put an F here, format the string, and put in status.id forward slash, and then we just need the payload. Next, let's go ahead and check to see that we get the updated one. So right now this status is staying the same. We need to actually refresh this from the database. And so to do that, we can say status dot refresh from DB. And all that does is it collects it back from the database because if we don't do this, this, this variable here, this uh, status object 
will remain the same with the content of another test status. That's why we refresh from DB. And then we can say the data, actually, I don't know why I'm adding all these unnecessary spaces, but we'll say response.data. We can say assert data ID. So the data that we get back from our endpoint, from our request, and then we'll say status dot ID. So the state, the ID must and should remain the same. Same. We'll say that status dot content should equal now the content that we put up for our payload. We'll say payload and then content. Let's go ahead and run this. I'm just going to clear the command line and then run it again. And we get a pass. So our update is working correctly. And then finally, let's test our delete. Now we'll say pytest.fixtures.django underscore db. We'll say test delete user status. This will be auth client and then user. We need both these fixtures. We'll say again, we'll let's take in this status here. Let's copy that, paste it in there. Let me just shrink this. Okay, and then we'll say response equals auth client dot delete. And this again will be we need to format it, so we'll say forward slash API, forward slash status, forward slash, and then the status. ID and for those of you in case you missed it make sure you have this F there so we can format in add in our variable ID here okay so now we just sent our deletion first we have to check to see if a response dot status code equals 204 so no content and this is 204 just to repeat and then we have to make sure that this status no longer exists inside our database now if we did status dot refresh from db this should actually fail so we can actually run this I'll just clear all this and run so that our test should fail now and ah okay we need to fix this decorator so it's mark so django db okay let me just run that again sorry about that oops and we get back a fee a fail and it's saying for, where's the test? Yep, yeah, for delete, uh, for test delete user status, it's failing. You can see this kind of marker here. It's saying this is where it's failing. So status, refresh from DB. Now, if we go down, you'll see here that we get this status, model status does not exist. Status matching query does not exist. Okay, so it's actually, to be honest, technically it's working. However, this test is failing. So in order to catch this error, to make sure we get this error back, we can use pytest, you can say with pytest.raises, and then models, so we need this does not exist, and that exists inside our status model. So models.status.does not exist. And inside that, we put in refresh from DB. Now, what that's doing is it's saying that, okay, in this test, when we run refresh from data from DB, we should expect this does not exist. And this is a really handy thing that comes with PyTest is really, as you can see, it's quite clean to write. So it will expect this error, it will expect this does not exist for whatever code we write inside this. Okay, so let's actually just save this. Go back to our command line and run pytest test status and we get back all passing so that's really it with um testing our endpoints i mean we missed out one and to be honest for the sake of it i'm just going to go ahead and add it in anyway because otherwise yeah it's just not it's just incomplete so we'll say pytest dot mark dot django underscore db and this is just testing to make sure we get back our detailed 
um, status. And for that, we need the auth client, oops, not in here, test uh, get user status detail auth client. And we need the user. So let's go ahead and first let's create our status. We can just copy this one here. And then we'll say response equals auth client dot get. And we need a formatted one. So forward slash API forward slash status forward slash and then status dot ID forward slash. And then we can say assert response dot status code equals 200. And we'll just get the data response dot data equals assert data and then ID equals status dot ID. And let's just do assert data content status dot content. Okay, now that's actually all uh, pretty much all our endpoints covered. But yeah, that's really it when it comes to writing PyTests for, for uh, APIs, uh, our API endpoints. What is missing is the service functions that we wrote. And you can, of course, create that. You can create a new um, Python package inside our tests, call it services, and then run tests on each of the services that we wrote. For the sake of this video, I don't want to make it longer than it should be. Um, it's pretty much the same way. However, with APIs, uh, testing endpoints, it's a there's a bit more kind of um, there's a bit more involved as we need a client, an authenticated client as well as just a normal client. But that's really it. Um, all of this code will be available on the GitHub link that's in the description. Uh, I also have a Discord channel, so if you want to pop in, say hi. If you have any questions about any projects that you're working on, feel free to do so. And yeah, that's uh, really it. I hope you found value in this video. And also, uh, if you enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe. But other than that, until next time.